Welcome everybody. We are back for another business Q&A. While I play League of Legends and answer your questions, I'm about to get in game. I've got my usual co-host Rishi Cup TV. Rishi, welcome aboard. Whoop whoop. It's Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. What's in the cup? You know, I uh <laughs> I wanted to have coffee in my cup this morning, but I've got a cup of water only because, I don't know if you know this, Evan, I can only eat, I can only drink one cu cup of coffee a day generally, and I'm going to be doing that with my uh, my community this today at one for my live stream, so I'm going to be drinking my cup of coffee with them today, <laughs> so I have water. It's kind of boring. Maybe maybe you got to like water down the coffee the so you can have double the coffee, you know? I know. You know what it is? It's actually, it's not the coffee. I like my coffee light and sweet, which means it's got sugar in it. And so for me to have two cups of sugar, it messes me up. Ah, well, maybe we need to find a, a, a sweet <laughs> version with less calories or something so we can double up. If we can, if we can double up on the Rishi coffee intake, that might spread some more <laughs> goodness in the world. <laughs> Get some... Uh, <laughs> sweetener or uh, agave nectar or uh... oh oh that's so awful my mom recently said why don't you start putting honey in your coffee i'm like oh if that if that's what it has to come to i'll stop there's, there's a solution <laughs> there's a solution rishi i think we need to dive deeper on it i feel like jay is already on the case with, with rising I, ideas I, here. <laughs> so that, that's great because I have literally searched high and low for alternatives, but like nothing, I mean, you, you know, all of the natural, I've tried all the natural sweeteners, all the healthy so-called sugar replacements, and like it just does, it's just not the same. There's a site called coffeedetective.com that talks about a naturally sweet coffee, so it's not sweetened, it's, it's just the kind of coffee it is. Interesting. And what kind of coffee is it? He's looking it up. Or you can do the Louis route and just go black. Intelligentsia coffee. Ah, okay. I think I've heard of that, but I didn't know it was naturally sweet. I'll definitely check it out. And I know, uh, yeah, black coffee. <laughs> a lot of my other coffee friends say, you're not a real coffee drinker because you don't drink it black. And I'm like, whatever. But yeah, black coffee's hard for me. I've tried. All right. I feel like there's a solution somewhere here. Well, I've got... What? I've got five drinks in front of me. Yeah, my uh, I read this on the other chat, but my Zen tea today tells me that an attitude of gratitude brings opportunities. So <clears throat> I'm pumped. I have a pumpkin spice latte from Jay, my honey tea, my vitamin water, my protein shake in in water. So what? I'm stopped. Oh man, yes. Uh, <clears throat> so I am uh, queued up. With Jay, he's in. He's in the game. He's in the house. Uh, I'm going nice. for jungle. He's going for mid. So this should be exciting. And uh, let's give a quick chat to the who do we have in the chat. We got Zeno's back. C. Rothert, welcome. Last minute, Louis. Good morning. Welcome, guys. Guilt Summer. I love it. Guilt Guilt Summer five one nine six is now hosting you. What does that mean? Oh, awesome. Extra exposure on their stream. Extra exposure on their stream. I appreciate that. Guilt Summer mm -hmm. 5196. Feeling the love. Wow. Feeling the love. All right. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get to some questions. Let's do it. And let's let's hope for a victory. I had 21 kills yesterday and we couldn't win. Ah. There are those clouds. Let's bring there it back. Clouds. We're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. I got to do better earlier game. Okay. Yes. That's my intention. Nice. Okay, question number one is... Okay, uh, first question is coming from Shadi, and Shadi uh, is saying, recently joined, I recently joined a company as an outside sales rep, and to be honest, it's out of my comfort zone, and it's great. The thing is, no one will make a deal with me on the product that I'm selling. Um, I do what my sales manager says, and it's not helping me. Uh, I do, I do the, anyway, he's asking a lot of questions and basically when he gets to the point where he needs to close, he hesitates, um, or the people who, who he wants to sell to are hesitating. And 
So he's basically asking what's the best way to approach and to sell merchant equip merchant equipment. Sorry, that reading was, was not great. All right. So uh, you know, I will say I am personally I, I probably myself need to get a lot of training on sales because I have not done sales. Um, I personally think that I would be one of the things that would be hard for me about sales is like, um, and I know this isn't true, but I, I would feel like, oh, you know, I don't want you to think I'm selling you anything because I just want you to know that I care about you. So sometimes I would be, I think, challenged by sales because I know there's this aspect of you need to convince the person to get what it is that you want to buy or you want them to buy. So. That being said, Evan has great videos on sales. Uh, a couple that I saw were uh, best sales. Oh, I love this video. I had to shot this one out because this was hilarious. Definitely check out the video, Sales Techniques from the Best Salesman in the World. Um, it's just, I remember one. that was one of the first. What, Evan? That's a good one. I like that video too. Yeah, that was, I think, one of the first videos I saw when I came to your channel, but it's just cool. And then he has, you know, a top 10 sales techniques for entrepreneurs. So you can hear from a bunch of famous entrepreneurs about sales techniques. Um, so yeah, I would, I would definitely start there. Um, what do you think, Evan? At the start of that email, <clears throat> did I hear it right where they said it's out of my comfort zone and I love it, or it's a good thing, or That's something? That's what it. Yeah, I think he kind of likes that he's being stretched. I like it. I like I like the attitude, man. I like the mindset going in. So many people, uh, you know, going outside your comfort zone is scary, and so you're trying to avoid it. So I'm I'm a I'm a big fan there. Um, mm -hmm. He said he's selling merchant equipment. Was that it? Yeah. So what I think of that is when people are doing um, like the email, the sorry, not the email, the the interact machines. And the, the kind of debit machines when you're going out um, to merchants like restaurants, um, usually the smaller stores because the bigger stores they have big deals with. And so um, Alex used to be in that business. Um, that's what I recruited him away from to, to join Toronto Dance Salsa. Basically going door to door on restaurants and small companies and saying, hey, we've got this, you know, uh, debit processing and visa processing machines. Uh, do you want to work with us? I think uh, I think when you're selling a commodity product, I'm a big believer in um, in core selling and not just trying to sell yeah. the, the features and benefits. Uh, people want to know who you are and what you stand for, and that you're gonna you're gonna you're of the same mindset. You share the same values, and they want to be part of what your business is all about, um, and then going out and attracting clients who feel the same way. And so now you're not just uh, you're not just selling the same thing as everybody else. Like, what's going to happen in this kind of scenario? You know, yes, there are some benefits to working with you, but it's a commodity thing, man. Like, you're selling a commodity service, just like uh, uh, just like a financial advisor you know, uh, even real estate agents, like, yes, there's some difference in the service level, I guess, but at the end of the day, you're selling the same product and it's super hard to stand out. Um, one of the examples I use in the book, oh, you can't see the book. The book's not in the Twitch stream. This is booked, it's over here. There it is. Um, is of a guy uh, who was a fan, a fan of mine, and, and was a florist and wanted to stand out. He was having a hard time selling flowers. It's the same thing. You know, you're selling a commodity business. What's the difference between one flower shop and another flower shop and another flower shop? They're mostly exactly the same. And so it gets beaten down on price, right? So my roses are a dollar cheaper than your roses. So I'm going to go with, you know, you instead. And that's the last game that you want to play. And what he's going to find is as he walks into these stores, it's going to be that same game where they're just beating him down on price to try to get the best deal possible. And when people can't mm -hmm. understand how you're different than everybody else, then price is going to be the only thing that they care about. Price is always part of the deal, 
but it's it doesn't always have to be the most important thing and and that's on you to show the difference and so the flower industry is brutal uh, super price sensitive one of the most competitive online businesses as well uh, a lot of the you know flower shops already have deals just like this you know a lot of a lot of the businesses that you're dealing with already have deals with somebody else and you got to go displace um, a current supplier let me get in here oh I'm not gonna buy I'm gonna not buy potions today I'm gonna go with refillable potion oh can I undo holy crap sorry I messed up my start okay <laughs> good okay whoo <laughs> talking and playing you know leads to questionable decisions sometimes <laughs> um, <laughs> <clears throat> so, you know, flower industry, <clears throat> uh, you know, luxury product, once somebody, uh, you know, once the economy goes down, people aren't buying flowers as much anymore. You know, if these businesses that he's talking to, you know, if there's a tank in the economy, the last thing they want to do is start investing into more technology. Um, and so I asked him, why do you want to be in the flower business? I need to connect to you somehow because why would I buy your flowers instead of somebody else's? Or worse, like not buy anybody, just not make a decision at all on it. And he said the flowers make him calm. Mm. When he looks at flowers and when he's around flowers, he feels calm. That's why he started getting into the flower business. He just, you know, he's, he gets stressed out easily and the flowers make him calm. That's great. So his one word is calm. What you need to do then is build a business around calm. And so instead of just being a flower shop, you're the flower shop around calm. And so that impacts every decision that you make in the business. It's, it's the flowers that you pick, like pick flowers that make people feel calm. It's the marketing, right? When I, even for when I look at your store from the outside, it should make me feel calm, right? When I walk into your store, it should have a calming impact, right? How I'm greeted by the staff should make me feel calm, the music that's playing, right? The team that you hire, all of that makes a big impact on me as a customer and you wanna be a haven. Oh, we got a kill, is that, oh, it's not Jay. What are you playing, oh, you got Heimer. You were doing the Pantheon experiment before. All right, we got <laughs> First Blood, it's good. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, talking back about calm, All everything you do should be a haven for calm people. Right, or sorry, people who want to feel calm should want to come to your store. And mm -hmm. once you start embracing that, then he'll start having more ideal clients wanting to come and seek him out because now he's different than everybody okay. else. And people who think that calm is stupid, great. Like they will never be good customers for you, right? They're gonna they're gonna just come in, buy some flowers, and then go off and do something else and never be great customers for you. You're not going to get along. And the people who love Calm will look at that message and be like, man, I wish I found you guys sooner. And they'll be loyal and they'll, and they'll be willing to pay more. They're not going to be as price sensitive. And so you need to find what it is that you stand for as a salesperson, as an entrepreneur, uh, and bring that into your business so that you're not just walking up and randomly knocking on some business's door and just playing the numbers game but you are able to attract the right partners to your business to help you market for you, the right customers who are open to your message. And it, it's not just about transaction fees. If you play that game, you're going to lose. So why is this so interesting for you? Why, why do you like this challenge? Why did you sign up for this? You know, what's the real benefit that um, you're getting from this? What's your why? And bring that to your business consistently. You'll start to attract people who feel the same way. And they'll be loyal and they'll refer business to you and you'll get media attention. Um, so that self-discovery process is important. And if you can figure out the core selling part of it, um, most businesses don't do it. Most businesses are just selling features and benefits. And it works, but it's ineffective. Because <clears throat> as soon as somebody else has slightly better features or benefits, you know, you lose. And yes, you still need to have a quality product, right? Like your thing has to work. Uh, that's you know hopefully a given. Oh wow, we're our, all our lanes are doing well here. This is great. I don't have to, I don't have to do anything so far. We're four and zero. I've done nothing. <clears throat> I might have to start the throw so that I have an impact late game. <laughs> <laughs> <He's not 
I need to have an impact. If I'm not having an impact, I'm not satisfied, okay? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, anyway, so that would be my advice. That would be my advice. Figure out what you stand for and then use that as part of your, um, your marketing and your approach so you can start bringing on people, um, clients who feel your message, who would want to work with you even if your prices were 10% higher because they love what your business is all about. Well, I like hearing this. Uh, you say this in this context, Evan, because I, I'm familiar with the core selling in the context of being an entrepreneur. But I like the idea of also incorporating that into even whatever. If you are a salesperson working for somebody else, you know, uh, bringing that same message. So. Yeah, and it's a little trickier working for somebody else because you know maybe maybe there is no mission. For the company, right? If you're the entrepreneur, you get to set the direction um, and the mission. There may not be a super important values-based mission, but that doesn't mean that you can't be on your own personal mission. Like, why do you like sales? You know, what do you? What's the impact that you want to have on the world? Uh, you can still have your own personal mission that hopefully doesn't uh, doesn't contrast at least with what your company is doing. But you can always take. You can always take responsibility and do something better. There's always an option to do something better. Um, so don't don't sit there and blame, you know, your boss or blame your business that you can't get to where you want to go. Cool. Yep. All right. Uh, next question comes from Luigi. Luigi, Luigi says, "Yeah." Luigi says, I just recently left my job to focus on entrepreneurship. Oof. Congrats. Congrats. He says, scary but exciting. After months of testing, I just realized uh, a mobile app on iOS uh, App Store. And he said, I wanted to see if I could get your assistance on next steps. Should the app be marketed or sold to a giant like Hallmark or Papyrus? The reviews and the feedback are very positive. Like, quote, this is genius. It's a typical response. Yet I'm having five to 10 downloads per day and only 10% of those upgrade to the paid version. Not to focus on the money aspect, but in terms of returns. At the current place, I will likely not make the investment back. My intuition tells me that the next step is to sell to a larger company. Let me know if you have any thoughts or if we could discuss further. Thanks. All right. Well, um, you know, I, first of all, just congrats again for taking the leap and doing uh, what's in your heart. I think I, I think I would want to just ask some follow-up questions about how much do you love this app and how much are you invested in it personally? Um, I think yesterday you had a video, Evan was talking about create a business that you wouldn't uh, plan to to then sell. And not, not to say that it's wrong when you do that. I mean, it happens all the time, but I think I'm, I'm kind of wondering maybe if you want to ask yourself, like, how much is this particular business something that you are invested in personally? It sounds like the fact that you are already thinking in your head, sell, it, that this probably isn't, I mean, you may really love this app, but it doesn't sound like it's something that you're invested in for the long haul. Um, so it might be the right thing to do um, in, in that case. But... Uh, yeah, I would also just ask, you know, have you been in contact with your users? Are they, why, have you gotten any feedback? And is there anything you can do to improve the performance of the app? Because it may be too soon to try to sell if you haven't made any adjustments what your users are saying. I'm done. Can you give me the numbers again? Yeah, he's saying um, five to ten downloads a day. Ten percent of those are upgrading to the paid version. 
Okay, so super interesting. So I mean, one, yes, I agree. Like you have to, you have to be doing it for the right reasons. You have to, um, you have to have a love for what you're doing. And people who build the business just trying to sell it often go broke because they don't have that love for what they're doing. So not necessarily the greatest strategy to start with. Oh, can I help Jay with this here? Yeah, we got a kill. That was mostly Jay. I just cleaned it up. Um. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to see if I can solo dragon here. Can I solo the dragon? Um, listen, 10% uh, upgrade is great. That's a, that's a phenomenal ratio. Amen. You know, if you're, if you look at industry standards, you're, you're probably looking at closer to like 1% or half a percent. So that's great what you're doing. But uh, five to ten downloads a day is not. So if your thing was so great and everybody loved it, you'd be getting more downloads. So the feedback, oh, kills. The kills are real. I'm 3-0. He's oh, got <laughs> another kill. <laughs> the team, the team, the team. We're doing work. We are doing work. Um you need to talk to your users better and, and see, like, get some better feedback on, on how, to, how to improve. You need to. Like, it's not good enough. You're not getting enough word of mouth. Five to ten downloads a day for an app that is amazing and great is nowhere close to being enough. If Rishi Cup loved your app, the world would know about it. Okay? <laughs> right? And that's, that's what people do. They talk. They talk about things that they like. Mm -hmm. So your stuff isn't good enough yet and that's okay but don't fool yourself and think that you know oh I'm getting great feedback so people are loving it are they using it every single day you know if they're not using it daily then it's not good enough and you need to tweak it and improve it and get that feedback um, you 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 deserve what you get I made this comment yesterday on my live stream and actually got a lot of love and support which was not uh, intentional but you know, I was looking at my channel. I forget who, what the interview was, but um, I have 400,000 subscribers on my channel. You know, I deserve that in, in both a positive and a negative way, right? Like, I put in a lot of work. I put in a lot of effort. And so, you yeah. know, I deserve those 400,000 subscribers. But also, I'm not at a million or four million, right? Yeah, I want to be having a bigger impact. I don't deserve that impact yet. Like, the stuff I'm putting out isn't that good yet I need to get better I need to practice more um, in my gratitude stream I was saying that uh, I was grateful for all the opportunities to practice like I still need to mm -hmm. practice more uh, I am where I am because of me and what I've done in a good and a bad context I'm not further ahead because I haven't done enough right I haven't provided enough value to be at yeah, a million subscribers yet and I'm working on it I want to get there um, and mm -hmm. some people took that as a, Evan, you're doing a great job. Don't be so hard on yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I feel the love. Uh, I really feel the love. That was, it was not the intention to just try to get kind of, you know, support uh, from the audience. But, right. but it is true. And so you are where you are with your app because it's not good enough yet. You're getting what you deserve. And so instead of, you know, uh, not that he's complaining, but instead of um, just sitting back and thinking that the product is great, go out and make it better. So I want people using your app every day. That's how good it has to be. If it's not, then it's not good enough. You need to improve. And so get as close as you can to your users. Talk to them on the phone if you can. You know, give them some in-app you know, reward uh, if you can. Something to get some feedback so that you can make this something amazing um, just taking some red buff here that's what I got I'm excited for you yeah nice to know Believe Nation wants to step in and encourage though <laughs> yeah yeah I think people felt like I was unduly hard on myself uh, I think people need to be harder on themselves too, right? Like, stop blaming other things. You are where you are because of you. So, 
that mm-hmm. sucks, but it's also powerful because you can get better. So go get better. Cool. Timo is 4 0. Our team is dominating. This is going to be a fast game, man. We're 20 and 5. I like it. Hey, what's with the new skins? Look at these minions. They're different. Thanksgiving skins, really? <laughs> Wait, it's U.S. They don't have Thanksgiving. Halloween. Oh, maybe Halloween. Yeah, right, we have Thanksgiving. This is our Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada. Yeah, spooky. Spooky. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I love it. What do we got cool. next? All right. We got next question from Balang Balangi. Balangi. And Balang. Okay. Balangi, yep. Okay. And he says, uh, Hi, Evan. I want to buy my first car and buy tools to start my small business. All right. What, what should I start first? Please help. Yeah, interesting. Well, um, I have a couple just follow-up questions because I actually initially thought, hey, you know, get the get the tools for the business because the business will help you get cash flow eventually to get the car <laughs> but you also need a car typically to do what you're doing so um if unless you're working from home and you can do everything from home and take the bus i don't know that car might have to be first okay uh i would say neither Stop spending money until you're making money. Like, <laughs> don't spend money. You don't need either. You need your hustle, your energy, your heart, your drive. That's what you need. Go out and find a way to make money. Don't buy a car when you don't have cash. Go find a way to make some money and then invest in the growth. Well, I think that, I think he. I don't know if he doesn't have the money. He might just have the money and has to choose my car or my tools for my business. <laughs> But maybe he doesn't have the money. Well, so if don't, that, yeah, if you don't have the money. If, if that's the last <laughs> cash you have, you know, if that's the last cash you have, I think spending on a car is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're going to spend on a business, then, then I, again, I, like, I hate spending money till I'm making it. Stop putting money into a company. Don't worry about that yet. Go find a way to hustle and make some money without having to buy the tools or whatever it is that you need to buy. There's a way. There's an easier way to get started. Do that and then spend money on the growth. Right? If you have some clients coming in, listen, Jay, the objective control today, I'm, I've been focusing on it. I'm pretty happy about it. I've gotten every dragon. I, I focused on my earlier game you today, guys, and, and it, it's me. working. It's working out it's really well. Pretty excited by what's happening here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I got sidetracked there, but uh, I'm proud of my performance today uh, really in the early happy. game. Um, yeah, go find a way to make some money with your business without having to buy tools. Borrow somebody else's tools. You know, whatever. There's a way. Find a way. Find a way. And then if that's something that you love doing and is making you money and you see okay now if I if I invest in my growth I'm gonna have even more success that's when you start spending money on it I wouldn't buy either because something may happen the economy may tank you know you may need healthcare dollars something right and if that's your last dollars then uh, I think a car is a is a terrible investment <laughs> well what was your first car, Evan? I don't have a car. I've never had a car. <laughs> I've never owned a car. I still don't. Nice. Well, is Toronto like New York? You don't need one. Uh, no, it's big. Like, you, you, I mean, yes, you can get by without a car. Um, I don't like, I don't, why do I want to like a car? I hate maintenance in general on anything. <laughs> I, I hate having a house. I hate having a car. Um, so I use Zipcar. Uh, when I need a car, I, I have a Vespa to get around when I need to. It's good for most of the year. You know, it's three months off in Canada, it's too cold to drive around in a Vespa. Um, oh, I forgot to buy the blue. Is Martin watching this? He's going to be upset. I didn't buy the Elixir or a pink. Ah, oh, still so much to improve on. 
<laughs> still so much to improve on. Um, but yeah, I hate I hate a house and I hate a car. Um, but in general, just it, it's a, it, whether it's a car or whether it's you know uh, uh, you know new clothes or something like it, it's it's not the best use of your last dollars. That's it, right, you know. And yes, clothes are important. You know, you have to dress, you have to wear stuff. Uh, but with your last money, like if you're looking at where I'm going to invest, that's that's what you use when you have money coming in. Uh, so. That's it. I've never owned a car. I've just realized I've never owned a car. I like that question. You just realized that? Maybe she's asking the questions. Yeah. I, honestly, like, if I used my phone, if I had to get around, if I used to, I don't have a phone either. So, <laughs> another terrible investment, guys. Don't buy a phone. <laughs> With your last dollars, yeah. don't buy a phone. Um, yeah, there's a lot that you, there's a lot that you've taught us that you don't need. <laughs> uh... And I used to have a lot of stuff. There's a lot of people who get by with a lot less. Like you don't need to have stuff. Um, if if I needed to get around, I would use Uber and zip cars. Mm -hmm. I don't need a car. I don't need a car. And if I was struggling between starting a business and uh, buying a car, I would I would put my energy and hustle and whatever I had into my business. Uh, but I still, ideally, am not spending money until I'm making money with my company. So, don't do it either. You know what? You have that money. Invest. Invest so that you start making some money. I want you to start making money. Stop focusing on how to spend money and how you can make money now. Invest. There you go. I love it. Evan's on a bit of a rant today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next question. This Renekton is really, I don't understand what he's doing. <laughs> anyway, okay. Yes, next question. One of the guys in their team just keeps wanting to fight me one on one and he doesn't even try to run away. I don't understand. And he's like, WTF is your damage. Dude, pay attention. <laughs> this is the second time. <laughs> oh, they, they surrendered. Okay, GG. It, unbelievable. Uh -huh. no, that's the end of the game. End of the game. Very sad, but also happy. So maybe we shouldn't do the question. I, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, GGWG all. Did we all get S's? We all got S's. That's crazy. Oh, finally. Listen, for the record, I got the best S on the team, but we all got S's. <laughs> First game I got forever. a. Yeah. I got a funny. I got a funny comment in the chat from last minute, Louis. Okay, what's up? Louis? Uh, he said, "Sounds." I uh, reached a TV at Believe Team. Sounds like he might need the car to carry the tools. Oh, that maybe. Use your feet to carry the tools. Nice. Borrow <laughs> a car to carry the tools. Nice. Take the subway. Nice. Find clients that are closer. There's always another way. There is always another way. When you have paying clients, then great. Go out and then make tools, buy tools, buy the equipment to help you grow and make it easier for you. But it's not how you start. It's not how you start. This is the this is the first time I've realized you're truly a comedian. I'm truly a comedian? Yeah. Canadian? Wait, comedian or Canadian? Canadian. I'm oh, truly Canadian. Okay. <laughs> Why does that mean? I'm truly Canadian. <laughs> because I, I, this is the first time I heard you say borrow. Borrow? Borrow? Borrow. Borrow? <laughs> you say borrow? Borrow? I say borrow? 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 Oh, maybe. Borrow. Borrow. I say go. I don't know what I say. Borrow. The O. Borrow. Don't borrow or borrow money. <laughs> Neither. Okay? Invest. Anyway, I'm riled up today. I'm riled up today, guys. I don't right. understand decision making sometimes. This Renekton, this guy I was up against, we fought like three times. And he still thinks that he can beat me. And he, he's like, WTF, how are people so confused? I don't understand. 
These are usually people that we're, we're teamed up with. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. Hey, it's nice to have them on the enemy side. I didn't even have the mallet. I, man, if I had mallet, I would have just shredded so quickly. Anyway. Oh, <coughs> we won! So oh, Zeno can, can start the street count at one. <laughs> yes. Street count at one, guys. Street count is at one. Um, love it. Well, we had an insanely long game yesterday and a pretty fast game today. So it balances yeah. out. Um, Rishi, what's the, what's the message? What, what's the theme of your thing, your, your, your chat later today? It's catching up. Oh, you're so sweet, Evan. Um, yeah, I just wanted to hang out. It's so funny. Yesterday, Evan was talking about how, you know, don't ask me to come over and just say hi. <laughs> so that's kind of what we're doing at 1 o'clock. We're just saying hi. Out. No! No! <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, yeah. No, I'm gonna. I'm also gonna give some updates on the channel, Evan. Okay. You know all my updates because you you keep up with what I'm doing pretty regularly and do some Q and A and and uh, just kind of connect over a cup of coffee. Love it. So. All right, one o'clock Eastern. Um, cool. Well, what's what's our final message of the day, Rishi? What are we leaving people on today? Ah, uh, well. Um. Gosh, I wanna, I wanna think of something that's actually gonna give value here. Um, I want you to have a cup of don't give up because truly there is, it's worth, it's worth staying in the game. I guess there's a metaphor there with Twitch. It's worth, it's worth continuing to persevere and to keep going. And like so it. this weekend, yeah, whatever you're doing this weekend or what's to come, just know that you can cup of persevere. Cup of persevere. I like it. I like it. I like it. Cool. Well, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I appreciate all the love in the chat. Yes, we finally got a win. It's exciting to be back on, on a high. Um, hope you guys have an amazing rest of the day. Go crush it leading into an awesome weekend. Happy Thanksgiving for my fellow Canadians in the stream. Uh, oh. oh, I guess we're not on for Monday. Yeah, Monday I have Nina and Hayden and a whole bunch of fun stuff. So no Monday uh, shenanigans. Ah, mm -mm. No okay. Monday shenanigans. Yeah, I'll still try to do the gratitude thing because I, I didn't mention anything about that. Anyway, cool. Okay, cool. Well, thank you guys. Continue to believe or whatever your one word is. And we'll see you soon.